Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. It's Christmas morning 2017, although you might be watching this on Halloween night 2029. Anyway, it's dark outside, but the sun is coming. Right on schedule. Okay, uh, this morning we have... Now, I wanted to start it right at the top of the hour. I wanted to start exactly at 6, but it's 10 minutes after 6. Well, I started looking at photos of Linda Ronstadt and Amy Lou Harris from about 45 years ago, so I got caught up in that. <laughs> in the hour of my darkness, in the hour of my need, oh, Lord, give me wisdom, oh, Lord, give me speed. Well, we got Kentucky blended whiskey from Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill, the famous Heaven Hill distillery of Kentucky, Bardstown, Kentucky. There's a bottle label. It looks like an old wooden placard from an old country store. And if you look carefully, it's got the HH emblem. Maybe you can see that. HH. Heaven Hill. <laughs> Family owned, still today, independent family owned versus 10 High, introduced 82 years ago, 1935. There is Hiram Walker. Maybe you can see that with the glare. I don't know. There's Hiram Walker with his leg up on a barrel. He's toasting you because Hiram Walker started 10 High. Well, not him personally. <laughs> he started the Hiram Walker Company. Then after he passed away, there were many, many ownership changes. And today, Ten High is a Sazerac Company brand. And it, all, it, is, it is also family owned and independent. And they're two huge liquor companies. Okie doke. Well, you may ask. You might say, are you going to go to church today? I went to Vigil Mass, Christmas Vigil Mass yesterday at 4 p.m. It was pretty crowded, but I was able to get a seat. I got there about 4, uh, 3.30, 3.35, able to park. They expanded the parking lot, so that was easier. Father Pat from Ireland went around shaking everyone's hand, wishing a Merry Christmas. So... Father Pat should come on here and do Jameson reviews with me because he loves Jameson. There's a bottle at the Knights of Columbus Hall and it's got magic marker on it for Father Pat only. <laughs> I said, uh, Father Pat, that's a popular whiskey in Ireland, huh? Oh yeah, everyone, what did he say? Everyone in Ireland likes it, you know? <laughs> okay, so he's a very dedicated Jameson oh, Irish whiskey drinker. Okay, well, anyway, but you may ask, but you may ask, what do these two whiskeys have in common? Well, I'll, well, let me tell you. One, they're both aged three years. Two, they're both blended, so they're not straight single malt or anything like that, but that's okay. Three, they're inexpensive. You can find Heaven Hill for about, well, actually, sometimes on sale $6.99, but usually it's around, oh, about $8.99, $7.99. 10 high, about $9.99, $10.99. Okay, so they're within the same range. 10 high, a little bit more expensive, but it's a blended bourbon, and that is not a bourbon. Okay. Number four, they're both sour mash. Yes, they both say that on the bottle, sour mash. And it says up here, the whiskeys in here are subject to the sour mash process. Okie doke. What else? Um, what did I say? Did I say they were aged three years? Okay, I, I lost count. Okay, uh, so. And um, they're 
both from the same area around Bardstown, Kentucky. Bardstown, Bardstown, um, Barton 1792 Distillery here, and the Heaven Hill Distillery. What are the, what's different about them? Well, the blend ratio is different. The ten high is fifty one forty nine ratio, and the the the, the Heaven Hill is a um, eighty twenty. Uh, when you get the Canadian blended and the Scottish, you know, Scotch Scottish blended and the Irish blended, though, you notice on the bottle it doesn't ever give the ratio. It just say blended. Oh, well, they have different requirements in those countries. America, I am in America. We have different laws. And if you read the Tax and Trade Bureau website, it just says Scotch whiskey has to comply to the laws of Scotland in the United Kingdom, okay? Canadian blended has to follow the laws of Canada and Irish likewise. But if you look at the guidelines in America, they're saying, oh, Canadian whiskey cannot have added coloring or flavoring according to our guidelines. But yet, since it's imported from Canada, their guidelines take precedence, you see. So even though it can't have it according to our laws, it can have it according to theirs because it's coming in, see what I mean? It's coming in imported under their purview. It's sort of like bourbon, right? Okay. Bourbon has to be certain a certain thing here in America. Boom, 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 boom. Very strict, as you know. But for export to other countries, those laws are not the same. And it doesn't have to be so strict. Oh, give you an example. Early times. Not a bourbon in America because it is aged in used wood oak barrels. <clears throat> but exported to other countries, it is um, classified as a bourbon. So, huh? How you like that? <clears throat> and apparently the general impression from the foreign countries is that basically all American whiskey is bourbon. I mean, that's just what they, they say. People, I remember I was doing a hangout on Rajay's channel by the way, no longer part of that hangout scenario, no longer invited. But that's another story. But one time, Tom, I was what? Well, me and Tom, the beer whisperer, he doesn't really whisper so much, but we got into a big fight, you know, and, and I think Rajay didn't like that because it didn't make it flow too well. It was uncomfortable. But to me, that made it better in a way because it's so boring just watching blah, 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 talk, talk, talk. And it was more reality TV because it was real. I know I was just so upset. I didn't. I wasn't upset at all, actually. And I don't mind arguing about stuff with people. And uh, I always want to make up. Let's be friends. It's cool. It's all about the drinks. It's not about me and you. I don't know you. You don't know me. I'm not into all that personality stuff. But then one time, Tom got into this big fight with a guy from uh, Scotland, and he was saying some pretty ugly stuff to him on Rajay's channel. And Rajay was getting like all, you know, really uncomfortable. But um, and I was just watching it, and I was saying, "Look at this here." But the th the thing about that fight was that um, the Scottish guy James says. Um, he said, "Well, American whiskey is not real whiskey. What do you say? It's not true whiskey." because it's all bourbon. And then the whisperer blew up, started cursing, screaming, hollering, not whispering, saying, you know, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, he was actually right. He was correct because he said bourbon is whiskey, you know. And, but the the delivery was the thing that got people upset, the way it was delivered, you know. Um, I was just watching it, you know. I wasn't part of that one, or I had already dropped off or something. I was just watching or watching a playback, and I was thinking, okay. <laughs> Everything I'm watching here, I expect to see. I Like, I wasn't shocked, anyway, from experience. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, that's that. People tend to think, 
that all American whiskey is bourbon, but it hardly is the case. Oh, well, when did, when did Heaven Hill, Kentucky whiskey come out? I don't know. I couldn't find anything. I just found like on the website, like trademark stuff that they said they acquired a trademark for, for their brand, like in 1964 or something like that. But that was just Heaven Hill in general. But then there's so many variants of Heaven Hill. They have bottled and bond. They have straight bourbon, which James P. Madonna's been drinking. I told him we ought to do a Heaven Hill hangout. He didn't respond. He wanted me to do Krampus, Krampus and stuff about um, politics. And I like to do that. He's left wing. I'm right wing. But we don't fight over it. But um, So I don't know. I don't know when Heaven Hill, Kentucky blended whiskey came out. But apparently it was a long time ago. And... Uh, there's some commonalities about Heaven Hill. They'll always have some like metallic thing on the back. Like it says Heaven Hill's number one Kentucky blended whiskey, number one. And then if you keep the bottles too long, it'll start turning green. So is that like copper they're using? This one hasn't turned yet, but it says uh, every drop of the Kentucky whiskey used in this special blend was distilled by, uh, I'm, I'm reading slow because um, I can't see it too well. Traditional sour mash, Kentucky craftsmanship to assure consistent quality and taste. Heaven Hill Distilleries, Bardstown, Nelson County, Kentucky. Okay, so there you go. Now, I did do some more research on the uh, Tax and Trade Bureau website and they said that the, the bottle doesn't have to say made in Kentucky if the title of the product is Kentucky. In other words, they said, if it says Kentucky whiskey, that, that means it has to be from Kentucky, all right? So that is the, they call that, what do they call it? The distillery designation. So they say, if it says Kentucky, that's where it's from. It's just, it has to be distilled there, okay? It's not brought in from Indiana. If it says Kentucky, okay? I know, I, I read that very clearly on their web, on the Tax and Trade Bureau website, which is very complicated. So you, you gotta kind of, filtered through all of the regulations. And the 10 high says Kentucky blended bourbon. So it is from Kentucky. All right, Merry Christmas, Jay says Josh B. Merry Christmas to you. Matthew Harless, Harrelson, Matthew Harrelson says, doesn't a lot of different whiskeys come from Heaven Hill? Yeah, like a whole lot. <laughs> it, 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 it be, it, it's dozens. It has to be dozens and dozens and dozens. I've had a few anchor coffee porters clearly. Oh my goodness, this early? I'm judging you, but I'm drinking whiskey at 620, right? Okay, it makes sense. All right, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See how, I'm not, I'm not drinking whiskey, obviously, I'm just tasting it. <laughs> Caught myself drinking whiskey this early. I wouldn't dream of it, but I will taste it. So let's do it 10 high. I think uh, it should be kind of easy to tell them apart because one's a bourbon, one's a regular sour mash whiskey blended. But sometimes uh, you get shocked. That's why it's called a challenge. And people are welcome to join the challenges on air. I don't know how that would work. It'd be kind of strange, right? Having two people flip the glasses around and do t blind taste tests. I guess it could happen, you know, I mean, it would be feasible. Now, I got to tell you, down in Louisiana, down in Louisiana, about a mile from Texarkana. That song always bothers me because uh, actually Texarkana is like 35 miles from Louisiana. So the song should say about 35 miles from Texarkana. Oh, he stopped around 2 a.m. Well, now, see, self-control. Henry McKenna, I uh, have... Well, I don't know if that's one of their brands, but just type in heavenhill.com and it's just a plethora. It's a plethora. It's, there's a Heaven Hill bonded. There's a Heaven Hill straight. There's a Heaven Hill green label bourbon, right? Then there's this one here, they're blended. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But uh, the Heaven Hill is much more popular in Louisiana than that Ten High. Ten High does well, but this Heaven Hill is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. 
go to any gas station, yes, in Louisiana, gas stations sell all types of liquor. Because what's better than filling up in a car and then buying liquor, right? Merry Christmas from England, says Winnie Wynn. Hello, Winnie Wynn. Uh, but like I say, you go to any gas station or grocery store, most of the grocery stores will have Heaven Hill, this one that I'm showing you, in all bottle assortments, the big jug bottles, which is the best value, down to the little, you know, flask that you take with you wherever you're going, I guess, whatever. But uh, so... The appearance is uh, hazy here and not, I'm only spilling them because I'm sloshing them around. Not hazy here. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll get a hot towel and wipe, wipe up the little drips. Um, because the 10 high is hazy. I don't know, it's not, something's wrong with my bottle. It wasn't filtered right. I looked at other Heaven Hill, uh, other uh, 10 high bottles and they were not hazy. They did not have sediment in them. Hadn't seemed to affect the flavor at all, though, or the aromas. And of course, I'm not using a control group because I didn't uh, um, taste the unhazed, right? I love those small tasting glasses. I know they're like about four ounces, I think. That's if you go to the very top. If you top it off where it's even with the rim. I mean, no one's going to do that because it's going to spill. I'm already spilling it and it's only half full. Yeah, they're little snifters, like mini snifters. And uh, they're so convenient. It's almost like a thimble size. And um, I bought these two glasses plus a tiny 50 milliliter bottle of brandy. Or was it 100 milliliters? Maybe it was 100. And it was called Vendôme, French brandy, Vendôme. Good stuff too. But it was in a package a gift package at ABC Liquor on US Highway 92 northbound in St. Petersburg, Florida, and it was $1.99. I was like, why would this be so cheap? But you know, I didn't ask, I just bought it. <laughs> and it was hell getting that package open, let me tell you. I couldn't, I was scared I was gonna tear it open and the glass would fly out and break. I mean, I had to cut it with scissors. I mean, this thing was like ironclad. And I thought they were plastic at first, They, but I washed them with hot water and got all the, they had like a film on them, and then I said, oh, they're glass. And I, I think even the little brandy bottle was glass, the Vendome. And then other people told me, I've had that brandy in big bottles. <laughs> I'd never seen it before, nor since. So $1.99, and the most convenient tasting glasses, the most convenient tasting glasses in a world. All right, here we go. Bart Robinson, good morning and Merry Christmas, Jay. Hello, Bart, good morning and the same back to you. Budweiser tasting glass you have is cool also. Oh, and I have a lot of those, not just one, I have a bunch. Oh, you're talking about the Anheuser-Busch tasting glass with the etch bottom. Oh yeah, I had one, I broke it. Then I bought another one, then I got one when I went on that tour two years ago at Anheuser-Busch in Houston, they gave them gave it to us just as like a gift. Yeah, a gift that after you pay 25 bucks to go on the tour. A cap, you know, cap, the glass. Here in Virginia, you can't get liquor at grocery stores, says Matthew Harrells. And that's right, they're very strict. In Texas, you can't get liquor except at a liquor store, only at a liquor store. Whereas in Louisiana, you can get liquor everywhere. <laughs> Grocery store, gas station. I should have done a tour here in the Bay Area. Should, should of, you mean should have. People will say should have, but they say it so fast they think it says should of. That's all right, I'm not here to correct your English, am I? Um, you should have done that and you should do it. You can do it, go ahead. You'll like it, you'll love it. Um, now, some parishes don't allow that. Now, if you go to St. Bernard Parish, you got to buy liquor at a liquor store. But that only applies to that parish. You would call it a county in your state. Because we have, you know, parishes can make their own ordinances, of course. But the state law does not forbid that. It doesn't forbid Sunday sales at any hour. Now, if you go to Baton Rouge Parish, West or East Baton Rouge Parish, they're stricter. 
cannot buy any kind of alcohol till after what one o'clock on Sunday that's more of a Protestant area where you start it's becoming more Protestant less Catholic more Anglo and less Latino and I say when I say Latino I mean French Cajun you know French Latin language Latino more of a Caribbean culture so that's sort of a borderline when you get to Baton Rouge you'll notice the accent changes too they uh, the way they speak is more similar to Mississippi or what you would call the South whereas this area is you probably notice it's different Of course, I know some parts of Louisiana where the accent is so thick, you probably wouldn't understand what they were saying. And if you want to go to Vachari, you can hear them speaking French. They got some areas where the people still speak in French. You know? um, when I was a little kid, 45 years ago, 40 years ago, we would go down there in Lafouche Parish, driving around, and uh, you'd stop at a bar or a gas station, they'd all be in there talking French. Everybody. They could speak English to you if you were a shopper or something, but they all spoke French. And at the, uh, in Grand Isle and at the marina, they all speak French. All of them, they all be speaking French. And over time, that kind of died out because the younger people didn't pick it up because of television and radio. And, um, but you still got people, you know, I know people that 70, 75 years old, they all speak French to each other, like, especially if they don't want you to know what they're saying. But sometimes I can kind of understand what they're saying. There. But anyway, okay. So, bon appétit, mes amis. The smells, I got to be careful not to look. Damn. And that's the clear one. I thought it was the 10 high. Okay, well, that's already got me confused. Dating for real sex. Go to Inna 20. Yeah. Got a real strong feeling if you hit that website, you're not going to get real sex, but you might get real scammed. So I blocked you, but you'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. I gotta go walking a mile before we leave to go to the relatives. And then when I come back, I'll walk half a mile. It's about 47 degrees. Cheers, first time I've seen spam here. Uh, no, 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 they've, they've, they've been coming in the last few weeks. Oh yeah. It did that on a uh, drunken ones hangout and he accidentally put well he put the link to the hangout there in the message board and somebody took over his hangout and I kicked him out of his own hangout. it was really strange and he had a lot of problems with his computer after that so I'm drinking a lovely scotch whiskey beer from Bell Heather Scotland waiting for my Christmas dinner Wow yeah it's afternoon for you guys okay enough rip rambling on Well, I got to say, this is very woody, <clears throat> very woody, char, heavily charred wood. What, Whatever that one is, people would think it's a bourbon. They would just say, that smells like bourbon to me. This one is not so heavily charred. I got to watch it. I, I'm scared I'm going to glance at it. It's more sourdough bread. Already, I think this is 10 high. Because 10 High has that really kind of pronounced sourdough bagel smell. It just, it's distinct. If you do enough of these taste challenges, and then some of my subscribers might say, I don't want to watch all this stuff all the time. Well, I understand that. I just would say don't watch it. You know, I mean, I like to do it. I can understand if you didn't want to watch it. It's like you're watching me practice. You know what I mean? Do you really want to go watch NFL teams practice? Well, some people do. They love doing it. But okay, is this distinctive sourdough with some some light vanilla caramel? But the, the predominant aroma there is sourdough bread. Just think of sourdough bagel. If you ever had a sourdough bagel, it smells like that. 
<laughs> if you eat too much sourdough, you'll just get a, a belly. If you drink too much of this, though, you'll get in trouble. <laughs> okay. Strong wood. So I already think this is the Ten High and this is the Heaven Hill, but I don't know, so let's taste. Man, that is so wood. <laughs> it's like drinking wood. You know what I'm saying? It's like drinking charred wood. Now, it's everything people would love in bourbon, and it's everything people would hate in bourbon. You know what I'm saying? Heavily charred oak. Now, but with an underlying, like, um, neutral water flavor now. But pleasant, not, you know, bad. Well, that's making me think it's that blended, you know, because they're using that 80% grain neutral spirit which is corn that they distilled to a clear liquid distillate. Which you can buy at Walmart, by the way. But if you drink it, you'll die. It's called Everclear, and it's not made for drinking. It's made for blending. But anyway, people are stupid, you know, or unwise, or careless, whatever. In, in Ireland and Scotland, all their blended scotch and whiskeys in Canada that's what they're using. You know, they're using a bulk grain distillate. They call it grain whiskey over there, grain whiskey. But if you read about it, it's just made from corn. You know, they just distill the hilt, distill it to the hilt. <laughs> so all your flavors coming from your whatever percentage of pure all malt, you know, barley malt whiskey, and that's how these work. The Heaven Hill. The flavors coming from that barley malt and it's probably oh heaven hill bourbon you know right so they're just blending it uh, uh, uh. it's got to be oh uh, you see <laughs> this has a sourdough thing man it's so bready like white bread and bread crust and sourdough it's really pleasant bread flavor i mean i was complaining about that jack daniels green label yesterday because it tasted like cornbread it was just too much corn it was like <laughs> uh, i didn't hate it but it was a little too harsh oh i'm sorry jack daniels y'all don't say harsh you say bold excuse me <laughs> whatever how i ever said that such a terrible thing so i think There's sweetness and there's an underlying like dried flour, a little candied fruit cake fruit, a little bit. It's all like a little in nectar. Well, I got to say this: neither one of these are expensive. Nine ninety nine at, at uh, Win Dixie for the ancient age, ancient age. Ten high, <laughs> and uh, uh, seven ninety nine or eight ninety nine, depending where you shop. For the, the Heaven Hill. So for that low price, they do have complex flavors. Um, so the question, can you buy a cheap whiskey that tastes pretty good? Uh, my experience would say absolutely yes. Are there bad ones? There may be. I haven't run across one yet. You know what I mean? I just haven't had one yet that was bad. Now I had one that was dull. And that was Kentucky Gentleman. And that was, and that's a bourbon, but that was just too mellow, too dull. And also, let's not forget the Canadian Mist, the blended. We all remarked that it was just so dull, so vapid, so vacant of flavor. So, yeah, that's the only one so far that was a real disappointment, the Canadian Mist. Thankfully, I only bought a tiny little bottle of it. Josh, well, let's see. Okay. Uh, I'm having gumbo for dinner. Ooh, delicious. I would say so. Merry Christmas, says U-S-S-O-C-O-M. Usacom. Josh, boudin sour bread. <laughs> boudin sourdough bread bowl with the clam chowder and San Francisco is the best. I've had some really good food in San Francisco. Can you really die from drinking Everclear? I mean, like drinking how much? 
look, I don't know, but uh, if if I'm gonna get a product and the company that makes the product is telling you don't drink it with almost like a skull and crossbones on it that it's poison, yeah, that's probably something you shouldn't drink. I mean, they're telling you don't drink it. It's made for mixing now. But people sometimes choose to do dangerous things and then they pay for it sometimes with their lives. So don't text and drive. Some people still do it and they don't look where they're going and they run into something and they die. They get in a wreck and it kills them. That message they got, that text was not that important. They thought it was. You say, well, the cops should see them drive. How would the cops see them driving and texting when all the cops I ever see are driving and texting? Think they're how can they look up to see what you're doing and they're not looking? Okay, uh, this is complicated and I'm a little worried because this one is so smoky. Uh, keep saying that, charred. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Look how daylight it is now. Yeah, almost time to go walk in. Oh, well, 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 which one do I prefer? Let's say that first. Which one's better? Hmm. Okay. And I've been neglecting, you know, I know I've been neglecting the Heaven Hill. I don't think that's right because um, for the price, $8 a bottle, it's a pretty good product and I shouldn't be neglecting it. A lot of people like these inexpensive whiskeys and I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, we get that here. I drink that. Which one's better? I'm even starting to get a little beeswax. You know, some of these whiskeys, they'll have like beeswax. If you think about it, like a waxiness. It's not bad. It's almost like that lip balm, you know, that you can put. You can get that Burt's Bees. It's really peculiar how, how they have it. And they don't have added flavors. They have to disclose that. They don't have that. There's no caramel color either, so it's, it's odd. Well, oh, I guess it's a tie because this would be a personal preference thing to say, well, I prefer the char or I prefer the sweet char, uh, the sourdough. I mean, that would just be what you prefer, right? Well, in my case, I like both. So I think the quality is a tie. They're both well made. Heaven Hill and Sazerac meaning Barton Distillery. These guys know what they're doing. They, these are distilleries going back over 100 years. So these are not like church, like amateurs, you know what I mean? You know who runs Heaven Hill Distillery? The Beam family. The Beam family. They've been running it forever. Ever since Heaven Hill was established, their distillery masters has, have always been members of the Beam family. Jim Beam family. That's a name that lets you know they kind of know what they're doing. Oh, well, I, th okay, so it's a tie on flavor. They're both good. They both have their own attributes. Do they taste the same? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If somebody tells you all cheap whiskey takes, tastes the same, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're talking about because I've tried a bunch and they do not. I have not had one taste anything the same as the other. Similar, not the same. Sorry, I'm not, I don't go along with that. Now you might say, well, you need to get some $60 bottles and I, I realize that, but I'm finding out that these lower end ones have so much complexity. There hasn't been a whole lot of incentive so far to jump up the scale. I mean, I'm, be, I'm buying just bottles, bottles, bottles here, there, everywhere for less than 10 bucks. And they all have intricate, interesting flavors. Could we have discovered something? Did we discover that this is like the hidden jewel of the alcohol world? Well, I got to say, uh, look, at all, look at all the gin that I tried. Clubhouse. That's from Heaven Hill. Crystal Palace. Um, Taka. All inexpensive. 
and all good and all have their own little and even the gin is more differentiated they all have their own little character like it's very interesting to go through those but i don't mess with gin too much gin is too dangerous like you you start sipping on that and then you start writing crazy things on the internet and you later on say i don't i don't think i wrote that somebody came in my house and they wrote that while i was sleeping or something <laughs> so that's not a good product to me um I'm just saying there's a lot of different little complexities with it and they're not all the same they're not the brandy is the only thing i run across that the, some of it can be treacherous like uh when i did the uh <laughs> the hartley vs oh that was that was a chore to drink now that one took effort each sip you had to negotiate because you were wondering if it was going to come back up so that's kind of bad but then I don't see it anymore. I think Hartley VS is gone. They only have the VSOP now. They must have watched my video and Sazerac must have realized, yeah, this stuff really is garbage. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> Let's only keep the VSOP and the flavored. And by the way, Hartley is very popular down here. Everybody sells Hartley peach, apple, red berry, the regular. And I've never tried any of the flavored ones and I don't want to. Okay, it's time. <laughs> with this very strong wood and with that very strong sourdough, I think well, that's incredible. You know, I think this is the ten high, and I think that's the the heaven hill. So, if you want something that has a strong, and I mean strong, charred wood flavor but it doesn't have a strong price. And you notice I didn't talk about pepper notes. Like, I'm not picking up much rye, you know? No rye, no rye, and I know 10 high. Sazerac likes to do high rye stuff, but I'm not picking that up today. Nope. Ain't picking it up. Ah, beautiful product. I think this is the 10 high. Holy smokes. Well, 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 well. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That's can that's Heaven Hill. H H. I put on the uh, tag H H K W. Heaven Hill Kentucky whiskey. Well, that's why it's a challenge. If we knew the Saints would win yesterday, we probably wouldn't have watched it. You know, that's why you watch a contest because you don't know who's gonna win. Oh, so the 10 high has the higher woodiness. Well, this is really strange because um, remember when I did this up against Jack Daniels, I talked about wood, 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 char, char, char. Although the predominant flavor with the Jack Daniels was that corn. I'm going to tell you what, I can live without all that cornbread. I mean, I like actual cornbread, but to drink it, I ain't too keen on it. I'm going to be honest with you. If you gave me a choice, like if I went to a Christmas party, and I've already been to the, the Christmas parties for this year, I suppose, that's it. I went to one Friday, I went to one Monday, but um, if you were, if I was at a Christmas party and you said, what do you want, what do you, what will you have? You want some JD or some 10 high? Well, I, I think I'll go with the 10 high. Just has a better taste to me. Well, is it way better? No. Not really, but it's a little better. Okay, well, so I'm 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 a little embarrassed because I got it wrong and I thought I would get it right. But uh, that's the thing, man. You think you know, but you don't know. But you might know one day if you keep practicing. Okay, all right. So, uh, <clears throat> well, what's next? Um, mm, well, we're gonna retire ten high. For the meanwhile so you've done very well ten high you you held your own and you showed us that you're you are a legendary brand uh from the bottom shelf world but that's okay it's still a shelf people buy from it we got no problem with it we're not whiskey snobs here 
if you're a whiskey snob, you're going to hate this channel. Um, but Heaven Hill, whoa, look at this bottle, how full it is. This was a year or two ago I bought this, like two years ago, and I've only done this much drinking on it. Neglect. And it's sad to neglect things, isn't it? So uh, I have a feeling we have a lot of work to do with Heaven Hill. And I don't know if James P. Madonna wants to jump in. I don't know if he can get this. I bet I suspect that he can. If he got the bourbon, he might be able to get this. So I'm going to ask him, uh, you know, will we ever do an examination? I doubt it, but... Um, Although I'll say this, and this is it. I'm getting off of here, all right? If anyone wants to examine Heaven Hill Kentucky Blended, no, let's do the blended. We don't want to start mixing the different styles. So I would be open to doing an examination, and I'll try to keep it short. But then we start talking and everything. All right. Um, so that was a fact to me. You might have laughed at it, hated it. But to me, this was a fascinating exploration because um, I'm kind of thoroughly shocked in a way. Now, after I go through the rotation, I, I guess the Heaven Hill's gonna, um, you know, the, the bottle won't be so full. And I still gotta drink down those brandies. Like, I can't get to it. I never can get to it. Like, I got the Paul Masson VSOP, and I got the Christian Brothers VSOP, and then I got the Christian Brothers Sacred Bond. And I have just been, what, drinking four ounces a week. That's not going to drink down that stash. That's going to last forever, I guess. And I'm sick of looking at it on the counter, you know, but um, it is a delight to always sip on it. I got to say, Paul Masson is like a guaranteed pleasant experience. You see Paul Masson, you're going to love it. To me, you're going to love it. You know, it's like, uh, and the Christian brothers, like they don't make bad stuff. I did their sherry and their, um, poor, uh, uh, sherry. Oh, the cream sherry and the dry sherry. And somebody told me that's garbage. I said, garbage? Your idea of garbage is a long way. You know, it's very different from my idea of garbage. To me, if things taste good and they're pleasant, I don't, I don't call them garbage. But anyway, all right. So thanks for watching this taste challenge. And it is very strongly possible that I could do one tomorrow. And it'll be Heaven Hill. You know, it's going to be Heaven Hill versus something. Pretty sure about that. Thanks. Take care. You take care and Merry Christmas.